Hey, what's going on, Ringsiders? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, takeaways, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to the channel. When talking about the current heavyweight landscape in boxing, most fans are familiar with the usual suspects. Undefeated WBC and Lanier world champion Tyson Fury, one-punch KO artist Deontay Wilder, cash cow Anthony Joshua, and maybe to a lesser degree Dillian White and the guy that caused the most recent upset, Alexander Usyk. A fighter mentioned sporadically is Joseph Parker. His calm demeanor doesn't reveal much, and with his second consecutive win over tough veteran Derek Chisora in one year, many boxing fans are split on what to make of the Kiwi's career so far. Over the years, many observers have criticized Joseph Parker and some of them remain critical today. Yes, he's a threat because he has speed, he has power, he knows how to throw combinations, but I think when he's when he's in scaredy cat mode, he, 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 he's be honest, man. I'm not even trying to disrespect him. Yo, I like him, you know, I like him. <laughs> but I, I think, I think he, I don't think he's he, he's really like married to the boxing game like he was. And Joseph Parker just doesn't respond well when somebody pulls him into a dogfight like that. And that is something that's disappointing about him because he is so talented in terms of his speed and athleticism and sharpness and all that combination punching ability. But just, he needs more dog in him as they like to say in the United States, you know? Just needs a bit more grit and determination and meanness. Just comes across as too nice. It seems to be a running theme throughout his career. You know, with him on paper being the better boxer like, you know, technician of the two. Why couldn't he stop Derek Chisora? I understand Chisora's tough, but it seems like, you know, if he would have just stepped on the gas a little, he could have stopped him. So this is the type of win that doesn't do any favors for the career of Joseph Parker. I'm telling you, his earlier fights, man, he was vicious. Like, I remember he threw a combination at one dude, the dude hit the ground. He was literally like, his knees was on the floor and Joseph still threw a, a, a hook and rocked him, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's the Parker I want to see again. We'll never see that guy again. The Chisora rematch showed a different side of Joseph Parker. And sure, that is against an aging Derek Chisora who has been in a lot of wars during his extensive pro career. Still, the improvements for Joseph Parker were visible. I'll tell you, it was a great performance for Joseph and he needed to, he needed to be that good. And I'll tell you, he needed to be as conditioned as he was because it was a grueling fight. And if he wasn't fit, he would have folded down the straight because Derek makes you do that. I was really impressed by the performance, but very impressed by the conditioning. You know, it was a big win for him because you need to win well and you need to win in exciting fashion. And I thought it was good. Good to see some spite from Joseph Parker, letting his hands go with bad intentions. Because I feel like he hasn't had the confidence in the ring. Um, and tonight we saw a different kind of Joseph Parker throwing with bad intentions. Today we'll answer the question, how good is Joseph Parker Really, let's get into it. Number one, first Kiwi world champion. On December 10th, 2016, Joseph Parker wrote history by becoming the first world heavyweight champion hailing from New Zealand, at least in the modern day era. He made two successful title defenses of his WBO world title, and even after losing his belt in March of 2018, Joseph Parker has been widely regarded as a top 10 level heavyweight. The only New Zealand heavyweight coming close to winning a world title was David Tuaman Tua, who as an amateur captured New Zealand's first medal at the Amateur World Championships winning bronze in 1991 and repeated that achievement one year later at the 1992 Barcelona Summer Olympics. As a pro, David Tua boasted a record of 52 wins, 5 losses, 2 draws, with 43 wins by way of stoppage, never being stopped himself. Tua Man shared the ring with all-time great Lennox Lewis and also beat a share of later champions Hasim Rahman and John Ruiz, who David Tua brutally knocked out inside one round. However, as exciting and formidable as David Tua was in his day, he never managed to win a version of the heavyweight world title. And so in that light, Joseph Parker winning the the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World is an anomaly. Number two, quality opposition. Never been stopped and two losses against two top five heavyweights. Current WBC interim title is Dillian White and then WBA 
and IBF Unified World Champion Anthony Joshua, which was a world title unification bout. Joshua versus Parker wasn't an exciting affair, partly because of an unexperienced referee who completely killed that fight. Apart from his two losses, Joseph Parker also holds wins over Carlos Takam, who after the Parker fight gave Anthony Joshua some issues in his IBF mandatory defense with Carlos Takam being a last minute replacement for Kubra Pulev. Parker took the O's from local rival Junior Fa, Yui Fury, who is currently ranked number 14 with the IBF and number four with the WBA. Joseph Parker was the first to ever beat former unified heavyweight title holder Andy Ruiz Jr., which was a close fight, though Joseph Parker boxed a tactically better fight than Anthony Joshua did in his first fight with Ruiz. And as mentioned, Joseph Parker just recorded his second win over tough veteran Derek Chisora who is still a top 15 with the WBC. I personally believe Chisora won the first fight. This time around Joseph Parker left no dispute scoring three knockdowns and hurting Derek Chisora multiple times. Number three, still a top 10 heavyweight. It's skillful and it's tough because I hit him with a punch and he got dropped and he got up and he dropped me. He loses way to go. This man's got massive future and a massive career. Joseph Parker is one of those fighters that I admire. Um, I've watched all of his fights from turning pro. He's took good, good learning fights along the way. Fight anybody, anywhere, and has always come through. If you take a look at Parker's body of work, it's not the deepest of all heavyweights, yet it is still solid having lost twice but only on points and being in one world title unification match. Joseph Parker stepped in the ring with an undefeated Anthony Joshua, who in my opinion clearly won, yet didn't come close to her Joseph Parker even once. Then in his next fight back to back, Joseph Parker fought Dillian White, who did deserve the nod in the end, at least in my opinion, but had to weather the storm, was visibly hurt in round 12, and had the fight lasted another 30 seconds, who knows what would have happened. Now, I know would-haves and could-haves have no place in boxing. The point, however, Joseph Parker was competitive against a solid top 10, maybe even a top five heavyweight in Dillian White. One can make a solid case for Joseph Parker's resume being better than the likes of Andy Ruiz's and Deontay Wilder's resume. Andy Ruiz Jr. held three world titles, and whether that was just a one-off or not, Joseph Parker beat Andy Ruiz, who at that time was still undefeated, and in proper context, that win over over Ruiz is a better win than Deontay Wilder's best win over Luis Ortiz. And with his current six fight win streak, as of the making of today's episode, Joseph Parker is a solid top 10, borderline top five heavyweight in the world. Number four, just 29 years of age. Being a professional boxer since 2012, Joseph Parker has fought a total of 32 fights, which is more than Dillian White, Anthony Joshua and current unified world title holder Alexander Usyk. Yet Parker is younger than the aforementioned fighters. In fact, as of this recording, Joseph Parker is only 29 years young. Also, Parker has shown a willingness to fight anybody, anywhere, as he fought in six different countries, New Zealand, Samoa, England, Wales, Germany, and the United States. The fact Joseph Parker closed out 2021 fighting three fights shows he wants to be an active fighter and as the Derek Chisora rematch on December 18, 2021 proved, the Kiwi has still a lot left in his tank. The fight itself was great. Joseph Parker boxed a great fight, you know, give a shout to Andy Lee, you know, he's uh, made a great fight out of Joseph, you know, I think he'll do well. Um, you know, I, the whole build up, my training camp was well, and that was it. Can't say anything else. You know, they called will train me very well for that fight. Um, and uh, we lost the fight. Number five, Parker's improvements. Joseph Parker linked up with Andy Lee, who is a Detroit Kronk School trainer under the tutelage of the legendary Manny Stewart. In the first fight with Derek Chisora, Parker struggled to keep Chisora's pressure off. Parker also struggled to implement the new teachings of Andy Lee. Now compare that with the Chisora rematch where Joseph Parker, who again has never been stopped before, was willing to go into the trenches with War Chisora. He will have what it takes. He has what it takes internally. Hard courage and the determination, the belief. Technically, we're gonna be there. We're gonna get there, we will. If it's not a title fight, then it should be a development fight. From, from my, because he's right there, right there. Look, who does that to Chisora? Nobody, you saw what he did to Usyk. No one does that to Chisora, what Joseph did, dominated him. I would, I would like to keep Joe developing. I think he's still learning, he's still improving. He's only gonna get better. He's probably at about 50% now. 
a lot more to go. And if this is a product of the Joseph Parker and the Lee pairing, what else can Joseph Parker produce during his active pro career? Whether Parker can regain a version of the heavyweight world title or not, given his latest outing against Derek Chisora, given his pairing with Andy Lee, given Parker's body of work, his experience, even in his early 30s, given what hopefully will unfold in the heavyweight division next, as long as the former WBO world champion keeps on racking up wins, and improve as a fighter. Joseph Parker is still a great addition to the current heavyweight landscape and would be an interesting yet challenging matchup for any of the top heavyweights, including the current world champions. So how good is Joseph Parker? Well, it's more on how good can Joseph Parker become. Even without a world title, Joseph Parker is still a solid top 10 heavyweight who has been in with solid opposition, who is still a young heavyweight, skilled, experienced, and has shown some promise with his new coach. And so the prospect of what is next, when and against who, is what boxing fans should really be excited about when it comes to the former world champion. To be honest, I don't really care who it is. Uh, anyone, you know, just I think as a heavyweight or as a fighter, I just want to be involved in big fights and give it everything, everything that I have like last night. As it looks right now, 2022 will shape the current heavyweight landscape and then we'll hopefully know more accurately where Joseph Parker stands. How do you rate Joseph Parker's career so far and what did you make of Parker's performance in the Derek Chisora rematch? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy content like this and haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. It helps out the channel a lot, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. As always, thank you so much for your support and welcome to Ringside Stories. Now, if you've done that already, you're amazing. We already know that you are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary day. Dang.